um, which was specifically referenced in the charge. Um, but second, just because to bring up mention of the process in terms of how we fill the spots on any given board and committee and that like we don't get to see the applicant pool. And so while I do trust that the town manager is, you know, taking all of this into consideration and giving us his best decision, it would be nice and helpful to have that process be re-examined. Pam okay, Rooney. Thank you. Um, Councillor Walker covered many of the points I was going to make. I was going to ask in addition, if uh, as part of the process of recommending something, we've asked a number of times to exceed the people that actually put in a community activity form. I think that could be added to this, the summary very quickly. It could be at the bottom of it and just say the following people submitted caps for consideration for this, for this um, uh, position. Um, I do know Bruce, I know him well, and he is a terrific guy. He's a very, very smart architect, knows net zero, but as Alicia just mentioned, um, he has he has gone to just about every committee meeting without having to be necessarily an appointed um, member of the committee. And I, I would hope, no offense to Bruce Colum, that he would continue to add his expertise but allow a voice of someone else, um, particularly a parent, to show up on, on this committee with a voice. Thank you. Anna. Um, I'd like to ask the TSO chair or vice chair to um, talk a little bit more about their discussion regarding this appointment. Um, I know when we, uh, sorry, when I have it open, it talks about the folks who were on the committee who interviewed the applicants. Um, but I'm curious to know if TSO had some of these same questions, and if so, how they were responded to. Andy? That's why I had my hand up to expand a little bit as chair of the committee. And I know that uh, Jennifer has her hand up, too, and she's also a chair of the committee, so she may add. Uh, and I, I want to come back to Council but, Lord, but go ahead, Andy. But in any event, uh, to answer your question, um, the, if you read the report that the committee provided, it made reference to the fact that there was um, a public comment that was offered. And we didn't say who it was, but I think that at this point, I will acknowledge that it was Jennifer Shaw who offered the comment tonight. And she stated clearly that there was at least one parent that she, um and she named the parent and as she so it um we had the full set of facts before the committee um the town manager um discussed it and his response was that we were now getting to a stage where the design of the building is pretty well set and we're into the construction details so that it's a different stage of the process and that at this stage of the process to have uh, Mr. Coldham as a member uh, was very valuable to the committee because um, his expertise was um, particularly important in the details of taking the design which had been developed with the committee to date, which did have the additional person on uh, parent on the committee. Um, and uh, so we took that very much to heart. And the other thing that I wanted to disclose, and then I'll um, sort of stop after that, is that there was reference uh, made in the report that there was personal knowledge of uh, Mr. Coldham's expertise on that. Uh, and uh, I was uh, chair of a committee that included um, original sponsors of the first version of the net zero energy bylaw, which um, so the select board felt was problematic and um, select board members who were considering, gee, we'd really like to do this, but we want to get, the, get it done right. And it was a really good committee process. Mr. Coldham was not a member of that committee, but he did provide um, great technical assistance 
to us and to me as chair of that committee. So the reference in the report uh, was uh, my experience and I've just related to you what that experience was. So I, um, I think that kind of summarizes our discussion and uh, then we came to the vote which was unanimous with one member absent. Councilor Lord. Speaking of one member absent, it was I, unfortunately, I had a mandatory work meeting, but I had received three emails that morning and it gave me pause because I do um, greatly appreciate Bruce. I spent a year going to those meetings as Mindy Dome's special project consultant, and he taught me so much in his comments every time. And also how we expand our town politics and inclusion is to prioritize maybe someone who doesn't have the expertise but is apparent and they're going to bring up other things because as i understand there's already an architecture architect on the um so had i been able to attend tso i, I would have hoped to open this dialogue and i don't know if you can add another slot or other things but yeah just as we move forward it would be nice to find ways to be more expansive and inclusive thank you Jennifer. Um, yeah, so I was at, I'm a member of TSO and I raised the concern and we discussed it, I'd say it a fair amount of length during the meeting that my concern is about the process and I don't know if it can, of, of how, why the town manager appointed committees are so different than the council appointed committees. And that's that's just the way our process is. And I don't know if that's something that could go back to, could be referred at some point to GOL to take up, or if that's something that would come before the Charter Review Committee. But the the three committees that the council appoints members to finance the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals is completely transparent. I mean, we the we, no, we don't. Yeah, the we don't. They don't. The community activity forms are not disclosed, but. Everyone knows who the candidates are. The statements of interest are publicly posted. We interview the candidates in a public meeting. We do the deliberation to select them publicly. And again, it's not, this is the process we've given to the town manager. It's not, it's some, not something he's chosen to do. But if we could look at why that process is so different for, it doesn't quite make sense to me that there's a different process. And one is very public and transparent because it's the council and that the other is not. Um, I ultimately, I, I did vote for the candidate that um, the town manager and his committee recommended. And I, you know, was also um, impressed. You know, it, it, I took into account that the chair of the elementary school building committee had also been part of the process as well as a representative, a resident from the, I think it's the resident advisory board. But again, so my, um, and, the town manager may want to address that, but he in TSO talked about that with this appointment, um, he still felt that there was there was diversity among the elementary school building committee, but my concern was with the process. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Walker. Um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to reiterate again that part of my concern with this was um, what was recommended in the charge for the composition of the committee and we're missing one of those spots that was specifically um, mentioned in the charge. But also just to push back a little bit on the perspective that Andy um, shared, um, because I know we're moving into the construction phase and it's important to have the perspective of architects, which we do have with the design team and with another member of the committee. But I think, again, the really important perspective is the on the ground perspectives of the youth in the school and of the parents and the teachers and the staff in the buildings. Um, and I think that these are unique perspectives that can be provided by parents of children who will attend the school. Um, so just like a couple of examples, just because my two of my three are going to be at the new school and are at, currently at Fort River right now. Um, 
some of the things that we're seeing is like changes in the pickup and drop off and how we're allowed to drive into the building starting already. These are the information we cannot get from certain members who do not are not parents of kiddos who are going to be in the school um, and how that is playing out on the ground for, for example, my kiddos who have special needs and who exit the building in a certain way. I was told by staff um, that that's going to have to change because of how construction's happening now and they are not sure exactly how that's going to look, but they'll follow up with me when we start changing the directions in which the cars have to drive in and out of the parking lot, which will start within the next week or so. Um, I also picked up my daughter from school today and she said she was sad. And I was like, what happened? She said, they took down our swings. We have no swings. Like these are on the ground perspectives that we're missing. Like I only know these things because my kids are in the school. My kid is in kindergarten. We're not hearing kindergarten voices or how it's affecting the kids who are actually learning in these buildings while construction is taking place. And my kids only speak for themselves. So I'm sure that parents of other kids would have different feedback. Um, and so I think that that's very valuable for me to have as a parent. Um, and also because parents have different parent groups and friends, because, you know, I have contact with some of the kiddos who are some of the parents of kiddos who are in my kids class, but I don't know every parent at the school. I don't know their perspectives. I don't know their experiences. And we all have very diverse experiences. And I think it's really, really incredibly important to have that diversity of experience of the folks who are experiencing these changes on the ground. Kathy. Recognizing my thoughts. Um, we're at a stage in the building where one of, uh, on whether you call them technical or not, but one of the issues is how much energy the building is going to use and coming up with a way that the staff understands how to assess it on an energy budget to achieve net zero. That subcommittee has been missing someone with an expertise on net zero buildings, on energies, and working with um, users of buildings. And uh, Bruce has a unique set of skills that speaks to that. And in terms of people on the current committee who have children, we have at least three who have children in the Fort River School building right now. And two, Alicia and another member have a child in Wildwood and a child in Fort River and they are in different programs. So the, their, their input has been extremely valuable. The one member we lost had kids in Crocker Farm, you know, so wasn't a current parent, but I think right now we're at a stage where this extra knowledge is critical and we would welcome any kind of outreach. Um, we were really looking for efforts to bring people to the forums, but we don't have forums that we're gonna be setting up now. The next steps really are getting the word out that this is happening. And Alicia, there was, um, in the early site package, we went through what was gonna happen there. It probably wasn't laid out as thoroughly, but part of it was that whole area where the swings and everything were going to remove. And there's been an effort to get that through the Fort River principal system to get out to the kids and the change, Jonathan Salvin, the other architect, has a child in the school. You know, so that we've, got, we've got a nice mix of people that are giving us feedback, including the principals. So at this point, I think this is an addition that will be really valuable to us. And I must say, looking way back at the charge, at the very beginning, I would have loved to have a civil engineer. We were dealing with some tr pretty tricky issues with someone who really knew wetlands and knew structural. And our architects had to reach out to the people they knew who were those builders, you know, because architects. So, so some of those skills, because it's a building committee, are particularly useful. So I think that was the issue here. So we had several candidates, um, not the one that people have mentioned, but several have attended literally every single meeting of the school building committee, have been reading the diagrams and coming to subcommittee meetings. So they're 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 there. And so they're not, there's no startup time. And there's been a big difference with some of the people because the school committee membership, who the school committee was sending, the person who comes, you have to say where we are, what this is, do the stage you're on. So having someone who comes in 
already knowing where we are and can read the diagrams, we're coming to 90% construction paper with very detailed architectural drawings and just given, take given one that more look. 11 o'clock, I'm going to move so the question. That's, that's all I'm saying is that was part of the Thank rationale you. for this choice. Councillor Walker, do you mind if we just go ahead and move the question? It, do you, one more comment, please. I just am trying to notice what's going on. Councillor Walker? Well, I don't disagree with anything Kathy just said, but I did want to share just one more story because you said something about someone who's going to help get out the word. And I don't think that a lot of us are fairly aware of how unaware the public actually is that this is happening. Um, so just another quick story. My cousin, whose kid also goes to Fort River, her car is broken. I've been bringing her son to school every day for the past two weeks. They started cutting down the schools. He asked me the other day, why are there no trees? I mean, sorry, they started cutting down the trees, not the schools. Um, and I... <laughs> He asked me, why are there no trees? And I said, they're getting ready to build the new school. And he had no idea. Um, he is a student in second grade. And, he, and my cousin, who is his mother, he said, you need to tell my mom. She doesn't know. And when we got there, I said, hey, I, Nico really wanted me to tell you that they're cutting down the trees. because, And she didn't know. My own family member. And I'm on the elementary school building committee. She had no idea. And her kid's in the school. So like outreach, it's going to be critically important, especially to families who do not speak English. And it is, you know, again, my understanding that one of those parents was a, another spoke multiple languages. And so how are we really going to engage the community members who are unaware if we're not bringing in members who are in the school community? Okay, the question has, uh, the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, we're going to begin the vote. Pam Rooney. No. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councilor Walker. No. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councilor Rette. Aye. Lynn Griesmers and aye. Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hagner. Aye. <clears throat> Councilor Lord. Nay. The motion passes. I'm now going to make some additional adjustments to our agenda tonight. Um, Councilor, Vice President, um, yeah. Vice President, Evelyn, Anna Devlin Gothier and I have agreed that we will postpone liaisons until the first. Can I make a quick note on that? Yes. I only heard from three of you, please. If you sent me an email, I'm going to check again, but my, by my creation of the memo, I had only heard from three of you. So I will double check again, email me again, just in case. Um, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my brain just stopped working. Committee reports, um, again, to the extent that it needs to be said, uh, CRC. Pam Rooney. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, the nuisance bylaw was sent to KP Law for for legal review and sent to um, GOL for uh, review itself. And the big news is that after two years, uh, the CRC is bringing forward rental registration bylaw and regulations and a fee structure to go with it and look forward to presenting an overview of that on, I believe, April 1. The nuisance bylaw will come back a bit later after GOL has had the opportunity to review it. Thank you. Elementary School Building Committee, anything else? No. Thank you. Finance Committee, Bob Hegner. I just wanted to mention that in our report, we also discussed uh, the uh, policy on disposition of surplus properties. So people, if they have questions about that, uh, please uh, just email me and I'd be happy to answer your questions. And that will come before the council, I believe in one of our April meetings. Uh, GOL, Anna. GOL will be meeting this week. Um, and we have a, we have yet to have determined the pool for either the finance committee or the charter review committee sufficient. We need more people to put their names forward for these two committees. Uh, we will continue <laughs> this. Um, as you all know, because you received the CAFs, we have not received any new CAFs um, so, since the last time GOL has met. So please 
do some outreach to your folks. Please let them know. Um, we've got vacancies on the finance committee for a non-voting member and the charter review committee for all members. Um, please, please, I don't know how else to beg for this, but please, um, we need applicants really badly. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Other than that, we've got we've got other things too. We're going to be starting in on the uh, review process for the town manager evaluation, um, and we have some proclamations. Okay. Jones Library, Pam Rooney, Paul Bachman. Pam, Paul. Yeah, there's no updates on that. I'm yeah, sorry. There's no there's updates. Okay. There have been no zero meetings. Okay, uh, TSO, Andy, and George Ryan. Yeah, the only thing that um, was additional that we really spent time on at the last meeting that was not included in the report because I had to do it with such a quick turnaround uh, was the uh, discussion presentation by the uh, superintendent of public works and uh, a um, support for the proposal on redesign of uh, sidewalks and crosswalks along the section of uh, North Pleasant Street that runs from um, the roundabout at the university up to the point where work has already been done um, south of uh, Pine Street. And uh, um, George reminded me uh, that um, there needs to be a forum um, on the subject of a major work of that type. Um, so I think that uh, I would do two things. One is that if you are at all interested in what is proposed there, um, to look at the TSO packet for the last meeting. And if there are any questions that you have about it, then let a member of the committee know and I will take it up with the committee as to whether we want to reopen the process to allow time for uh, getting more public input uh, through the forum process. So I guess that's my report. Thank you. Uh, Paul, town manager. Thank you. Just I do want to mention a few things. One, first, we're really thrilled that Camille Theriac will be starting on April 8th as our new director of community responders. We will be holding a reception for her. Uh, the interim leadership team is organizing a reception for her later that week, and you'll all be invited. I hope you can come get a chance to meet with her. Um, Kathy already mentioned the Fort River uh, Elementary School groundbreaking on March 26th at 3.30. I hope you're all able to be there. Um, the Senior Center Open House is, is in the packet, April 8th, I think, whatever that date is. Um, the, and then lastly, the um, police chief search, we're planning on, the search committee is planning on inviting the two finalists to town on April 2nd. Uh, there will be an interview, there'll be a um, open session with each of them in you know, different times, not obviously together. Um, and so we'll, we'll, I learned that later, late this afternoon, so that we'll get that word out so people can uh, set, set their schedule to meet the two finalists. Are there any questions of the town manager? Okay, we're going to town councilor comments. Um, I got my report in, it was late. I invite any questions now or later. I do have one correction and that is ranked choice voting was not reported out. It, we will not know until tomorrow whether it's been extended or reported out. Uh, and um, Anna, you had a report as well. I did. Uh, my report also included the information about the ranked choice voting. Um, so this is the first VP memo. Please take a look at it. Let me know if this is going to be at all of interest or helpful. Basically, what I'm trying to do is track the bills that we've put in or have expressed an interest on or have mentioned in a resolution. I know I am missing some. I am very aware. Please tell me if you've seen one that I am missing and I will add it. Um, and if there's one that you have interest on, uh, in and you want me to just keep tabs on it as well, please let me know. Um, this list should be shifting. I heard back from um, one of our mm -hmm. uh, state reps staffers today on some um, information that they have about some of these bills that just hasn't been updated on the website yet. So um, continually going, but let me know if you want something added. And um, just I wanted to make a quick note. Uh, Lynn and I are going to meet 
uh, at some point this week to discuss how we bring topics forward to our state delegation. They've asked for a more streamlined prioritized process. And so we may need to shift just asking for general topics to bring forward because um, they'd rather, they wanna hear about things that the council has um, voted on or taken a stand stance on in some way versus necessarily something that counselors might just be interested on their own. So um, more coming on that, but Lynn and I are going to meet to figure out the best way to seek input um, and make sure folks are heard while also respecting the time and energy of, of our state delegation. Great. I also uh, do want to note one thing, and that is that uh, the present open meeting law that allows virtual meeting expires at the end of March. We made a specific point with our delegation to say, hey, you need to do something. Uh, but for any of you that are noticing meetings, that are going to be like the first week of April, uh, until we know that this has been extended, there is no virtual option. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor comments or future agenda items? Councilor Ryan? I know it's late and uh, I'm asking your indulgence, but I have some things I need to say. Um, I was deeply upset by what transpired two weeks ago. At Please Amherst. speak closer to the mic. I was deeply upset by what transpired two weeks ago at the Amherst Middle School. Not by the period of public comment in which many of those present spoke with passion and at times eloquence and respected our request to keep comments to a two minute limit. I agreed with the council's decision to extend the comment period beyond what was allowed by our rules so that everyone who came out that night and who wished to speak had the opportunity to do so. What upset me was what happened after that. The same courtesy and respect that we showed those who came to speak their minds to us, as I believe was their right, was not reciprocated. The audience had its time to speak. Now we, as their elected representatives, needed our time to deliberate. But when the council initially took actions that many in the audience disapproved of, the meeting rapidly became chaotic. At that point, we should have adjourned, but we did not. I was upset with myself first and foremost that I did not act more forcefully and insist that we cease deliberations. While I did repeatedly say that we must stop, that was lost in the noise and confusion. But I still had the opportunity to at least call for a vote to adjourn, but I did not do that. And for that, I blame myself. But I'm also deeply disappointed in us collectively. We could not hear each other. I could barely hear myself think, and yet we went on. We were not deliberating in any meaningful sense of the word. We repeatedly violated our own rules, spoke over each other, spoke without recognition, engaged in back and forth with the audience. And I myself was guilty of all of those things. Something very similar happened in Northampton when its city council came to vote on a resolution on the same issue, but it was handled very differently. When the audience repeatedly interrupted their deliberations and refused to desist, the meeting was adjourned. They reconvened two days later on Zoom, allowed yet another 90 minutes of public comment, and then they were able to talk to each other. The resolution, by the way, passed by a nearly unanimous vote with one abstention. One of the most important things we do as a body is to deliberate. I value hearing what each of you has to say. I often learn more from those with whom I disagree on an issue than I do from those with whom I'm in agreement. Tonight was a good example. But on that night, I did not get to hear your thoughts. As I said, I could barely hear myself think, let alone anyone else. Going forward, I hope that if something like this ever happens again, we will have the foresight and the courage and the wisdom to declare an adjournment and come back when we can, in fact, hear and be heard and fulfill one of our most important and sacred duties, deliberation. Kathy? Just time, I won't um, speak at length, but uh, um, when you just said that our state representatives would like the council to have thought about something and targeted it. 
I would like us to target the charter formula. We spend send about 3.2 million, 3.3 million each year to charter schools, which is $21,000 net. Um, in contrast, we only send $5,000 when a child choices out. If we, uh, if we even spent just half of that, the million dollar hole wouldn't exist in our budget. So really thinking of putting a hard court press on changing the way the formula works to the disadvantage, not necessarily saying good charter schools shouldn't exist, but the state could open up a line for charter schools. I think we need to take a group stance on it because it's a long-term problem and solving it would solve it year after year after year in a, in a positive way. Thank you. Councillor Walker. Can I, sorry, can I just respond really briefly? Kathy? Uh, sure. Um, Kathy, if you'd like to get together and write a resolution in support of that, I think it's something the council could vote on and then have really good standing to bring forward. I think yes, but I'd like us to have a specific thing we think should have ha happen rather than we should just say it's unfair. I'd like to go behind that. And I'll put together a background paper and anyone who wants to help Annie has already offered to to lay out what the issues are. Okay, great. Thank you. Councillor Walker. Um, yeah, I just wanted to take a quick second to address uh, some of the things that happened during public comment. And while I know we can't speak directly to comments that we had tonight, um, and I know that we cannot cut people off because freedom of speech, I'm hoping that we might be able to determine like as a rule of practice of the council that if something like that occur again, we might make a statement after public comment um, that could read something along the lines of, uh, we do not condone hate or hate speech and we value each and every resident regardless of race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, or any other way in which they choose to identify themselves uh, because this space in general is not very welcoming. It's scary for people who have never come to comment for us before. And I can only imagine what it might have felt like to proceed a comment like that. Um, and so I hope that, I know we cannot cut them off, but maybe we can say something just reaffirming that like we value everyone. Councillor Walker, I could not agree more and would ask that GOL look into such a drafting such a statement. Uh, Councilor Lord. Thank you. Quick point of clarification. The virtual option that goes away, does that include for subcommittees as well? It does. Lynn, the, it, it expires in 2025, not 2024. I thought it was 2024. It, I hope you're right. I checked the open meeting log website right. because we aren't in trouble. Startled me quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's 2025. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just assumed it was one year at a time, uh, and I know it's in the one of the other bills. But thank you, uh, Councillor Ette. I'd also like to address um, what we had as the meeting a couple of Mondays ago. I'm going to focus on two points. And the first is going to deal with the environment of that meeting. The second is going to speak about the process. I'd like to add my voice to all the voices that have spoken up during that meeting and the description of the events that occurred in that meeting. I'd like to provide a different perspective. And this evening, we've had a lot of discussions about diversity. I hope my voice can be considered one that provides that diversity for the proceedings that occurred. I looked at the, what the lawyers had to say about the meeting. And I've read the comments of those who were both sponsors and those who didn't support what was sponsored. And one of the things that seems to be lacking 
is a sense of what the environment was on that meeting on Monday. I'd like to read what was written by the lawyers. If you go to the page where KP Law had its comments, point number 13 speaks about the fact that there was something like an adjournment, but actually no one stood up and no one left. And the idea that could be gotten from that is that all the counselors who were there understood that moment to be just something that was passing. In fact, if you go still to what was written by um, the lawyers, number five says, the audience grew more boisterous. I checked what the word boisterous means in a dictionary. It means, actually, let's just think about it like a bunch of fans at a Boston Red Sox game. That wasn't what I saw there. It was serious enough for me that I had to have a recording when President Lin called for the adjournment. The noise was so much, I was concerned about my safety. I had to have a recording. And it was a recording for about six minutes. I sat down and I wrote down my thoughts. And the word that I used was melee and pandemonium. And then I am reading comments by members of the community that speak about passion and describe what happened as just an example of democracy. That's concerning to me. By the way, in February, during the CRC meeting, three members of the Zoom audience spoke for about 15 minutes and they used cuss words during public comments and it was serious enough that during that meeting and even days afterwards, I was receiving comments from people asking how I felt. Someone tossed the N-word, but I wasn't even sure it was directed at me, but this was during public comments. But on the meeting on Monday, the words that were used extended beyond public comments. They extended to the very discussions that we were having. I'd like to say to the members of this town that that is not the kind of environment that we want. Neither is it the kind of model that we should be expressing for those we want to be politically active, the children that come after us. I've taught in college, I've taught political science. That is not what I taught my students. That is not what I would want anyone to take away from the kind of work that we do. What the environment does, and this now goes to process, is that it assaults deliberation. And what exactly is deliberation? It is thinking aloud, but it's thinking in public. One of the benefits of the council is that we get to hear not just others speak, but others think. There's a lot that we don't know. I, maybe I might speak for myself. There's a lot that I don't know. For example, this evening, I voted to abstain from one of the votes. The reason being, I couldn't, given what was said, understand completely what happened. That's with regard to the debts, 1.5 million. The environment that we had then was hostile. And it was hostile because it prevented us from deliberating. Think about it, this evening, there were conversations or at least shouts outside the door 
That is, they were not physically in this room, and yet we had to take a recess. It was supposed to be five minutes. It clocked at more than seven minutes. Why? Because in a hostile environment, it is hard to express yourself. And what ends up happening is that some people can decide to keep their thoughts to themselves. If we are truly representatives, then we want to express our votes and express the reasoning for our votes. What happened on that Monday made it hard for me to do so. And I'm hoping and pleading with our community not to, not to downplay the corrosive nature of disrupting the council and the deliberation that goes into whatever the council does. Thank you. Andy? Yeah, I too want to just make, uh, uh, say something <laughs> related to the fourth of this month. Um, however, I think it's going to be really brief because it's mostly a disclosure that I decided to write an article about my thoughts regarding that particular evening and submit it to the Amherst Current for publication. And um, it is going to be published possibly tomorrow. And I wanted to just make a public statement that I have done that so that it's out there and to this group and um, to any public who are watching the meeting. And uh, I'll let the article speak for itself. Okay. Pat? I, I just want a clarification. Okay. I just want a clarification uh, because um, one conversation I had, I was also in that CRC meeting, and it and it was the N word, and there was also some really grotesque, anti-Semitic, pornographic comments that we had to sit through. It was a horrible, horrible experience. And when I cl I asked you, Lynn, you know, you said we don't have to listen to pornography. He should have been turned off. But you also said we didn't have to listen to hate speech. I thought, and so the N word o repeated over and over again should have been stopped. And it seems to me that we had that kind of we had that kind of comment today. And we, it wasn't stopped. So I'm just really trying to get a clarification here. What are the guidelines? And is it okay also if... I was going to say right now. I'm more than glad to share with the group in the near future tomorrow, a um, piece that we were provided by with our attorney over this very issue. And the bottom line is um, there is no perfect solution. It is horrendous. And I um, have spent a lot of time on trying to figure out when we can stop it and when we can't. And when we do stop it, are we opening ourselves to a freedom of speech lawsuit? And it is not an easy one. So I, I would have loved to have shut people down tonight. Absolutely loved to have shut them down. And yet, that's not the advice I've received from the attorney. Can I, as a counselor, can anyone as a counselor? We've got a I'm sorry. Can I, as a counselor, turn off my sound? Can if, yes. If, can we all do that when we? Yes. But the problem is that how do you turn off your sound versus? Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're at home, 
can you down. can turn it off, turn it down. Sitting here, we can't. Okay, and then one more clarification. The print. No. Square Pam Rooney, can you? Um, I know, Pam. Pam. I got it. Um, the pornographic. Can we stop that? That is a little more clear, but not as. But it yes, it's a little more clear. I, I am totally and completely open to any and all suggestions on this, but we have to do it within what happened in the case that led to all of this which was the Southbridge case. So I'm sorry, I took a long time. That's okay. Jennifer, you have your hand up. No, I, I just wanted to thank counselors uh, Ette and Ryan. You know, I appreciate your comments. And I don't know if this is some conversation we want to continue at the retreat, but I just thought those were very um, heartfelt and insightful. And I just wanted to thank you personally for for addressing that that meeting tonight. Unless there's no other comments, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn, seek a second. Change seconds. And we have to do a roll call. This way there'll be no doubt as to whether or not we have adjourned. What? Roll call. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. No. Oh, come. Patricia. Fine. A Anna Devlin Goth. Aye. Councilor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. It's unanimous except for one. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Pat, unless Pat.